All right, y'all, this video is powered by GatorCountry.com. Shout out to GatorCountry.com. Make sure you're at GatorCountry.com to see some of these film studies a couple of times a month, man, or however we feel it. But want to talk about my man Kyle Trash. So excited for his future development. Want to show some of the ways that he can actually improve, which is scary to think about with how good he actually was this season, right? I know we all want to see Fat Five Emory Jones, but... I have a hard time believing that somebody could just sit somebody like Kyle Trask down. I mean, this kid has that high of a ceiling, in my opinion. He could be the best quarterback in the SEC next season. I think with Trask getting the lion's share of the reps in the offseason, you'll see a big uptick in his production as well, and it'll make it even more difficult to deal with the Trask at hand. So on this particular play right here, to start out the game, of course, you're going to have what amounts to putting a pass tag on the back of a run call to see if you're going to be a good play action team you need to pull your guards right you're going to have to be pulling linemen to really sell it so this looks like it could be some type of shotgun power o right or shotgun counter type with no there's no counter motion on it though but he's going to be having a middle read for this pass tag right so he wants to see if this guy is able to go with the flow of the action right here and if he does he knows that there's a vacated portion of the zone right here that he needs to get behind. What I don't like about these plays though, and I think that they disallow quarterbacks to really become quarterbacks, right? There's just one read on it, and there's always something else that you're not looking for that comes open as well. So you get an overhang defender who comes down here, and Trash is just worried about this guy, right? <laughs> so this guy will be right in the way, and Trash is already committed to going back here on a slant to Van Jefferson when you have a seam route by Kyle Pitts right here, that's wide open. Check it out. Nope. So almost picked off. So when I saw this right to start off the game, I was like, man, why, why, why? But I understand it is what it is, and that's what they're doing with quarterbacks these days. But you see right there, the man does follow it, right? So he, he sort of vacates it. So they're definitely he was definitely right in that particular read. But, man, you, you got to be looking at more than just that. But these type of plays don't allow you to. And if when he gets more into his development, what he'll start to do is then he'll subtly slide over here to really take this guy off and then be able to throw it and have Jefferson continue to run. And that would be wide open or it will be more open, right, with a, with a better sight lane. But check out Kyle Pitts right here. <laughs> right. If this was a even a half scan read or something like that, or if he's able to get back to his, his, his second or his tertiary read, he's got a seam route right here to one of the biggest freaks in all of college football with just a couple of defenders to, to try to make miss or run over. I really love this because it almost acts as a build. We just saw Pitts running down the seam, right? So it's looking like to the naked eye or to anybody cheating on their routes like defenders have known to do right cheating on their assignments that it may look like the same exact play however Pitts cooks this bad boy to the outside runs an out route um banged him and flipped him and he ran it flat too that's one of the things that i like about kyle Pitts is his actual route running see him right here split the man right so my guy's taking an inside technique and then he commits to it now, Pitts knows he has him right there. All he has to do is stick that foot in the ground and flatten that bad boy out. Look how many tight ends are putting, putting, the, oh, getting jiggy with it, right? Look at him. He's getting jiggy with it. Put that foot in the ground, flatten it out. Come straight across, right? Some of these guys are curl it, lead the defender back into the ball. He gets flat with it, and then Trash leads him, right? Essentially throwing him open. And this not going to be unstoppable next season? Come on, man. All right, so here's what my man Kyle Trask needs to work on. He's got to clean up making those mistakes. I know Dan Mullen does not want to play high-risk football. It's really not his style, right? He'd rather actually be a ground-and-pound type team, but it shows you how great he is. That's why I call him the hacker, because he will do what it is necessary to win ball games. So I think Kyle Trask got caught here in a three-deep man under coverage to where you're going to have uh, three guys taking a, a third of the field right here. You can't see this one off offline but you'll be working with a two-man route concept where they had copeland going vert and then you had freddie swain coming on an out route right but i'm not sure what coverage trash thought it was but he he he, he threw an out route right kind of threw it nakedly because he was being bombarded with pressure 
And uh, the guy peeled back off of his third coverage and, and got got it. So we'll roll that. You see right here, he pseudo looks it off, but he had the pressure. But you can see the guy come, right? If you look at it from here, you see Copeland running them off, right? Perhaps some type of vertical, maybe a post or something like that. And you see Swain, uh, he took a hard out, right? Banged it on the inside and then ran a long out. So this guy right now is technically with Copeland, but if you're running a third, you're still in some type of zone. It's like man within the zone confinement to where you're still looking at the quarterback. But this is what really what made it right here. Yep. As always, getting pressure. This time the worst type of pressure. My man Nick Buchanan here. <laughs> I'm not sure what happened to Nick Buchanan right here. He gets molly -wop, spun like a dreidel. And you get pressure, quick pressure right in your face. And you start to panic. So he launched this bad boy before it's ready. If he would have had a little bit more time, maybe able to slide up in the pocket or something. Maybe he could have either taken off or just ate it. Probably would have been in his best interest to just eat this. But in a deep third coverage, the guy peeled off and he beat Swain to the out. Obviously, it was an off-target throw as well. So got to clean up, man. He throws, a, he throws a, a pretty decent amount of interceptions, right, for all, for all the – Stuff that you hate about Felipe Franks. This is a big problem to me with Kyle Trask. He will throw some bunnies to the other team. There's just something about the timing of a damn Mullen screen. Uh, they get a block and release right here from our guy, LaMichael P. Ryan. And then just look at the space, right? It's just all about timing with screen work. A lot of these guys, to me, when they're doing their screens, they telegraph it a lot or they may go to it too much. But how many times have we seen tunnel screens and everything from the hacker? That is just so timely. And they all sell this very well, right? Great use of influence blocks, touch and go blocking, and everything of the sort, right? And these guys can't still can't even tell. He's thinking that he has a sack, and all he did was vacate the premises for a nice string screen pass, especially with a tall quarterback like Kyle Trask. Nothing but space and opportunity from then on. And Michael did a great job in this game of actually getting north south, not dancing too much, right? Danced in the backfield, danced in the background. My man P. Diddy, the Michael P. Ryan. They had a good game, though. All right, so here we go again. See, this is why I like Kyle Trask, because his development will be further for the fact that he'll have more experience. And your biggest step that you take as a football player is when you're able to go into the offseason and take a step back and really go through some of the stuff that happened to you because it happened to you for the first time. So if you're able to step back, get in the film room, be like, oh, okay, so this is what I got to work on. And this and this is what happened. So on this one right here, man, he almost throws a pick six. What it looked like he thought was going to happen was you got Kadarius Tony running to the post, right? Uh, kind of bang A action. And it looks like this particular receiver would have him in man coverage, right? I'm sorry, this particular cornerback would have him in man coverage. And uh, then you have a cornerback out here. You would think that he would be in man coverage. Gr Grimes out here, I think, is running an out route. So what happens is he pretty much just lets him go. And he's running a kind of an underneath coverage, right? Almost like a, a cover two on this side, right? Cover three on one side, cover two on one side. And he pretty much gets fooled with this. But he got it in there, right? We'll just run it. Oh, that was bad. That was bad. So you see, Darius Tony, he passes him off, right? So now he sinks back into the zone. And what he has is the underneath coverage. So you see the cover two working over here. And then this particular uh, inside, this is actually a safety. So this safety ends up taking Kadarius Tony in a man up situation. <laughs> and that's how you get it. <laughs> Almost got got, but he has such a good product placement on this particular one. He's able to get it by the corner. And get it to the out that could have been bad cannot have his mindset to to just do something but he'll understand that now when he takes a step back from the season i really do love the motion the empty plays for florida i don't know how to work out next year i suspect that it should be pretty good with jacob copeland and Kadarius tony trayvon grounds hopefully and these guys maybe a grad transfer coming in and stuff like that so you get motion to empty and they're still running kind of a three deep shell right you can see at the very least the three guys occupying a third of the field for the coverage show. So you know that something like a stop route, some kind of quick curl hitch or something like that is open. Then you leave it up to your guy 
to make a play after that. Ain't nothing like being able to throw something small and have it become a large gainer for you or some type of visible gainer for you. All right, check this out. Everything's created equal. To the naked eye, this looks like an RPO, right? But there's no run blocking in this. So this is straight up no option, right? So that's why he had to stare this down. All right, you see him staring it down? You would want to, if this was a, a pass tag on the back of a run call, this guy did not sink, right? Or he did not approach the line of scrimmage or anything. You would hand this off to Piron. So there is no actual read involved in this. You can see the pass block in here. Nobody's firing off the ball. You can you can tell Ethan White here not comboing up to the second level to get anybody. And you can just generally tell in all their stances that this is pass protection, right? So there's no read on this. And he, obviously, he's going to have to stare it down so the guy knew not to approach. Get into the passing lane. Probably need a little bit more reads on this or some type of option, or he needs to know to mission abort and maybe be able to follow behind Piran. I conversely, you can see the difference here. You got Stone Feet Forsyth comboing up to the second level. Uh, he's going to eventually be reading this guy right here who approaches. Then you'll have a pull from Hagee. And what looks like it's going to be a shotgun. Oh, but he's able to actually read this bad boy, and he does a, a decent job of finding a window, even though it's not that smooth. Definitely better than last time. Still needs a little bit of work right there. So you see him kind of subtly slide up in the pocket a little bit. Just barely gets it off though. It's always somebody running free. Richard Garage or the left tackle. Nice throw down and away. So he's got to get better on these RPO plays. If you see right here, this is definitely one of them. He should have just let go. The guy just stood there. So he had the mission abort. So. At least he did have that option in his head right there. The guy slow played this parallel to the line of scrimmage. You can see the organic crease starting to form right there for Piran. He would have got something out of it. Um, don't need trash taking more hits than he needs to take, but tried to pump him out of his shoes and he made something out of nothing. Ooh, took a hit on his knee though. So I do know for a fact that Dan Mullen would love to be able to run something like this with a guy like Fab Five Emory Jones. However, uh, it's tough to, for me to see Kyle Trask not being a starter. He's that He has that much potential to me. But this is how great Mullen is. Just like the play before, when I told you it's almost like a bill, go ahead and run the same thing again. Same thing again, and this time the dude bites hard on it. Right? So if that's 5-5 five, five, Emory Jones, he's really getting it upfield. No doubt about that, but just... So what you gain with Kyle Trask and his ability to spray the ball over the yard, to me, absolutely perfect. This dude's like, oh, you got to be kidding me. How you get me with the same thing that I didn't get got with before? Perfect play calling, brilliant play calling by Dan Muller. I just love it when they let Kyle Trask go through full screen progression. So you're going to have LaMichael P. Ryan right here on a flat route. Going to have a drive route coming underneath. Kyle Pitts coming on a dig. All right, one, two, three, abort. And he's just athletic enough to keep you honest and get a first down. Right. Let's count them. All right, one, he wants to go over here to the left. All right, two, looking back, right? Kind of seeing what's going on with this crossing route. Three. Want to come back side here? It looks like there's a, a curl route or something going on. It looks like Tyree Cle Cleveland over there. That's it. Abort. Really good work. All right, I just love this one. Working from under center, 11 personnel. Going to have rocket motion by Freddie Swain. Going to have a clear out route by Trayvon Grimes. It's going to end up being a seven man protect, but the cheese is made obviously when you see these reduced splits. Got Van Jefferson coming over on a deep over route. And it's just there for the taking after a back to the basket play action fake. Rocket motion really sells that bad boy slides in the pocket, leads him. Let your man do the rest, right? So we definitely should see that being uh, somebody like Jacob Copeland next season. I just really love being able to show people different looks right there. So 
sliding in the pocket subtly. Got the half moon theory. There's always somebody uncovering, so you don't have long to act if you're a quarterback behind Florida's offensive line. But he able to buy, buy himself some time and get it done, man. So I just absolutely love Kyle Trask, and I love Florida's prospects for next season. Uh, for simple fact that, man, a lot of these guys are coming back that got a lot of playing time because they emptied the cupboard, right? It's very much rem reminiscent of Clemson where a lot of people was like, oh, they're losing this and that and losing this and that, but they didn't see who actually got playing time. So, and this, this goes for both sides of the ball. Florida will be good next year. <laughs> I wholeheartedly believe that Florida will be good next year, and I think Florida could be good enough to win the SEC East. It's going to be a tough task. Georgia's not going anywhere. Uh, but Florida's not going anywhere either, so I can't wait to see those particular matchups. And some of these guys are getting better as well. Tennessee, I uh, got to look out for those guys, and you just never know what happened with a with a South Carolina or some teams like that. But Florida's going to be good, man. I can't wait to see how this shakes out. I want to see some Anthony Richardson eventually as well, but I want to see what happens with Fab Five, and I want to see the growth and maturity of Kyle Trask with some of these things that I noticed right here in this particular game. So I'll come back with more on this game here a little bit later. Uh, shout out to GatorCountry.com. And as always, thank you for watching. Peace. What more can I say? Top billing. Top billing.